Thank you, Chairman. And thank you very much for showing up this this early in the in the morning. Well, to be honest, uh, I'm a little bit upset to be the first speaker for the day because um, we do not have uh, that big an audience, and it might largely due to two reasons. First, after two days of uh, meetings, you already feel tired. Second. Probably CBN is a media, and you'll find uh, media uh, a little bit boring and not very um, imaginative. But whatever the course, I'd like to share with you my understanding of digital marketing. Thank you very much. CBN has set up an ecosystem of uh, media. It covers uh, uh, websites, prints, and TV stations. Starting from June last year, this uh, conventional media ecosystem has uh, transformed itself because uh, the Alibaba Group strategically invested in CBN. Therefore, since June last year, we begin this journey of a new media transformation. Alibaba uh, has the largest uh, digital marketing platform in China. It provides all types of uh, digital marketing solutions, and along the way, a large amount of data has been accumulated. And because CBN is known for our research capabilities, so uh, the two uh, parties join hands and we are now able to provide you with uh, very good solutions. So here I'd like to make a presentation on the uh, type of uh, data analysis we can provide you to help you uh, create value. CBN stands for China Business Network. I've, uh, I used to work at Alibaba Group for eight years and then was uh, transferred to uh, CBN, Big Data. Uh, we not only have Alibaba and Tmall and Taobao, uh, these uh, e-commerce uh, portals. We also set up a comprehensive commercial service system. Please take a look at this slide. In our ecosystem, we have uh, both transaction uh, platforms such as Taobao.com. Uh, over the weeks, we made the announcement that we have completed the 3 trillion GMV. The number has exceeded that of Walmart. We are now the largest retailer platform in the world. And Alipay, uh, recently uh, the uh, uh, Ant Financial has uh, finished a round of uh, financing. And Ali Financial uh, was uh, centered around Alipay. So Alipay was uh, underlying the financial services provided by Ant Financial. I understand the forum here uh, is about food and beverages, but uh, let me explain to you the sources of uh, data. On top of that, we have a tiny. A tiny is a logistics network, logistics service network. Uh, it's responsible for the uh, transportation of data of uh, a parcel from point A to point B. So it's not logistically transferring a parcel from point A to point B, but the data transfer from point A to point B. Now, uh, to share with you some important pieces of data. First, Alibaba provides you with uh, 1 billion items of commodities, including a large amount of uh, food and beverages items. The total uh, transaction uh, value uh, was uh, 3 trillion RMB annually, 3 trillion. Active uh, uh, businesses, active businesses, uh, 100 billion. Active buyers, 400 million. And we also provide Taobao access to rural China uh, across 25 provinces, 260 villages and counties. So I was asked to talk about the application of big data. And uh, I was afraid to address this topic because uh, everybody has a lot of data, but it's 
It sounds a little bit outdated if, if I choose to uh, avoid this topic of uh, big data. Uh, three years ago, if you if you didn't talk about Groupon, then everybody thought you were an outsider. And today, if everybody doesn't talk about big data, that person sounds outdated. But data has always been there: payment and uh, receptance data, data about customers. These data have always been there. But can they know? Do they know how to uh, design their marketing strategy based on their understanding of data? We need to understand data. But the first things first is you need to tell where your data is from. Some data is from a reading uh, platform or a search platform or a social platform. We cannot say these three sources do not produce high quality data. They reflect the footprint of uh, uh, person on the internet, but for a business, you need to know what data constitutes valuable data or data that carries commercial implications. Well, let me explain to you our rationale. What data do we collect? We do not collect data, uh, reading or view page viewing data. We do not collect simplified internet behavior uh, data. We do not accept the accumulated text uh, .txt uh, data on web pages. We only collect purchase, request, transaction, volume, payment, and logistic status data. Therefore, we focus data collection on the transaction-oriented detailed data. So Alibaba has all the uh, commercial data, and we at CBN helps uh, uh, do the data analysis. I've got uh, four points to make today. First, how do we use commercial data to make sense of the market? If you are from the textiles industry, then uh, how do we look at the uh, fashion market, uh, the supply chain, and the competitors in textile industry? But you are not from the textile industry. You are from the food and beverages industry. Therefore, the examples I provide are going to be F and B cases. The second point is what sells very well online. I will make data talk. For example, you have a very uh, uh, good single items or ex uh, versus explosive items. The third point is uh, what is a fair analysis of the life cycle of these products? The life cycle of a product also uh, is a function of uh, your analysis of the market, your judgment of the consumers, and how the trend moves. Last but not least, what products can become explosive items? Explosive uh, models. Explosive models are those uh, that in a very short span of time, its transaction volumes uh, rocket up. So we call these uh, models explosive model models. So all these unknown brands usually have a one or a two models of products that sell really well in a very short span of time. We call them explosive models or explosive items. For example, iPhone is a explosive item in the category of smartphones. OK, one by one. From a data analysis, we compare the uh, online growth trend of uh, different categories. Here, uh, it has to be uh, industry and the business specific. And sometimes even within a business, it will have to be business division specific. Given the different contexts, how do we make these comparable? I think data analysis, if you do it correctly, can help you make sense of uh, these different comparisons. First, the food, uh, food industry enjoys rapid growth, I mean online. The online transactions 
uh, growth is faster than its industry growth rate on average. Let's look at the 2014 from Q1 to Q3 uh, and to the uh, Q1 to Q3 in 2005. We we'll make comparison over these uh, uh, two periods. We find the number of uh, buyers online grew significantly. Well, um, today's uh, sharing, uh, first we saw the bench line, the bench line. Um, we cannot provide you with the specific data. Uh, the data has been uh, in encrypted because uh, for the privacy reason. But uh, the point is clear. The number of uh, tr uh, transactions performed online have uh, grown significantly. Next slide. Within the industry, um, what matters is not only the trend and the pace, but also opportunities that you can capture. We not only look at the industry trend, but also opportunities that belong to you. Usually we use the term uh, blue ocean or red ocean. but. Seriously speaking, no such differentiation between blue ocean or red ocean. Look at the chart on the left. Uh, imported food. In the Q1 of 2011 to the Q4 of 2015, the transaction volumes or the penetration of imported food Penetration is an important uh, measurement in data analysis. Here we look at the transaction uh, volume and the transaction value. Uh, starting from Q4 2013, imported food grew uh, dramatically. I understand you are not here doing imported food business, but I use uh, this perspective to make the point. Uh, till Q1 2015, the uh, Q quarter on quarter uh, growth rate was uh, the same as the first quarter in 2014. But usually Q4 is a peak season, seasonally speaking. Now, look at the picture on the right. From 2011 to 2015, is about the penetration of imported food in the market. The market penetration uh, was not as rapid as online transaction volumes and value growth rate. That is to say, Chinese consumers prefer uh, imported food to domestically produced uh, food items. Because the imported food uh, transaction volumes outpace the growth rate of uh, all the uh, food products put together, imported and domestically produced. But what are the opportunities that you can capture? Let's still look at the food sector. Please look at the pie chart on the left. In 2015, for imported food, we will divide them into different kinds. For leisure food, it accounted for 40% of uh, all import goods, import food items. Now, as I mentioned, often we would have our own judgment of the market. For example, we feel that people are more and more health conscious, and um, Chinese people are beginning to question the security of uh, food manufactured in China. That is why they're now buying a lot of imported goods, starting from import formula, baby milk powder. But uh, how can we verify such a feeling? How can we make sure that uh, there are statistics that support such 
a claim. I believe that business data is the answer. Now, um, other kinds such as uh, kitchen food and health and nutritional food take up quite a big part of the pie chart. In fact, uh, it was quite recently that we could see that health and uh, nutrition products accounted for a majority of import goods, but now leisure food items took part the majority part of uh, accounted for the majority part of imported goods. Now, uh, let's look at the contribution, growth contribution of imported goods. It seems that uh, the contribution rate kept decreasing. And if we look at um, the next slide, things we have already said that leisure food items have become more and more popular, and I think it is because there are more choices and the flavors are a lot. This is actually a sign that shows that the brand concentration in this category is not as strong as other categories. Now, by brand concentration, I would mean that for a category with a high brand concentration, products are offered by a small number of big companies. If you look at uh, the top 30 brand market share of imported goods, we can see that for dairy products, the brand concentration rate is really high, which means that Chinese consumers, when they buy import dairy products, would um, choose from a small number of brands that they rely on, and they, are, they have a really high brand loyalty. If we have that insight, it will help you to make full use of your resources and production capacity as a producer. Now let's move on. As I talked about brand concentration rate in last slide, now in particular we talked about the concentration in dairy products and leisure products. Now let's look at in the year 2013, 14, 5, 20. 13, 14, 2015, what are the brand preferences for the top 10 brands in Timor? In 2013, three out of top 10 were imported goods. In 2015, seven out of top 10 brands were imported brands. They would uh, include Erkiland, Ocean Spray, Sugar and Spice, Ferrero, Hershey's, Links, and HKJEBN. Now, we can say that um, those who buy these top imported brands at a relatively low volume would be considered potential consumers of uh, these brands. They may just get to know these imported brands. But we also have um, senior foodies who buy these products very often and at uh, quite high values. Now let's look at the loyalty of these two kinds of people. In 2015, we can see that for number two, number three, number two would be Ocean Spray. For the junior foodie, the index is actually higher than the sugar and spice brand ranked number three. I am not going to talk too much about these brands, but these index differences show that for this product, for this industry,
they are entering a new market because it is getting more and more popular among junior foodies. So the brand is expanding very rapidly for Ocean Spray. Now let's look at senior foodie. It is uh, 55. Which means that um, for senior foodies, they are very satisfied with this product and they would be repeat customers for Ferrero. Now let's look at user profile. When we look at the markets, the industry, to look for opportunities, we need to understand our customers as well as possible. Many companies, when they make decisions on production and operation, the decisions are made by the CEO or the top management. So the uh, senior management or the CEO would make the decisions based on their personal preferences on product label, taste, packaging, etc. Sometimes they would hire external consultancy to help them. But if we have big data, we'll understand what our customers are like. And when we make decisions, we will be able to know what kind of target customers our products shall have. This chart shows um, category preference for imported goods between 2013 and 2015. I don't know if um, they are the same as your instinctive judgment. Now let's look at the first category, leisure products for tier 1 and 2 cities. It has the highest preference, and it also has very high preferences in tier 3 and 4 cities. So for leisure food items, they are popular in tier 1 to tier 4 cities. But now let's look at dairy products for tier 1 and 2 cities. Middle-aged consumers are the main consumers, so if you want to do marketing, you should target middle-aged consumers in Tier 1 Tier 2 cities so that you will be able to have the best effects. Now, for nutritional healthy products, they are preferred by middle-aged people in Tier 3 and Tier 4 cities. I don't know whether this is in line with your instinctive judgment, but in fact, we can see that a lot of nutritional products have done a lot of uh, marketing in Tier 2 and Tier 1 cities. We uh, look at consumers from a geographical point of view. Now let's look at other dimensions. In fact, in our study, we have 64 tags to describe one customer, including the gender, age, education, location, etc. They are the usual dimensions that conventional media or consulting companies would choose. We would even also choose other more innovative dimensions, such as horoscope, because uh, horoscope sometimes might uh, be an important factor in decision-making processes. Now let's look at gender. It is true that uh, women love food more than men. They are connoisseurs compared with men. But sometimes, actually, it's possible that uh, women buy them online and share them with their husband or boyfriends. So marketing that target women is very helpful. You should understand how they talk and how they think. Yesterday, there was a news report that said a cosmetic um, company paid 22 million for an ad that would go on Papi John's video programs. Now, this is a rational era. Many years ago, companies would pay hundreds of millions to get an ad spot right after the seven o'clock news report and before the national weather forecast. That might be impulse purchase, but now they may must have made their decision based on very rational judgments. And this shows the power of uh, internet celebrity and the power of internet marketing. Now let's look at um, the next slide. 
When we look at the unit price and frequency of purchase, people aged 23 to 28 would often buy more frequently. So for sellers of imported goods, how can you keep your customers is key. They would buy more frequently, but they would buy at a relatively small value each time. So you need to convert a new user into your repeat customer. It is very difficult and it would uh, require a lot of costs. Many decision makers would want to increase their user base. They would ask their marketing departments to always find new customers. But in fact, strategies shall be different in different industries for import food. It might be a bad idea to serve your existing customers. The cost is lower, and by increasing your repeat customers to buy more often, you can have better effects at a lower cost. So um, we had a look at market user profiles. Now I would like to briefly talk about those explosive or explosively popular items. How can we use data to analyze those explosively popular items? They can show us very different and useful insight. We can get a behind the behind the scene look at these items. The first explosive item is a Korean product. It's called Gilliam. And if you look at uh, the 2013-2015, it accounted uh, for 99% in its category online. But in 2013, it was barely known by the Chinese people. We always say that uh, the Internet age is an age of disruption, and uh, such companies are very strong. In 2013, nobody knew this brand, but in 2014-2015, the product became hugely successful. In the end of last year, I saw a drink that had a nationwide ad campaign. The company tried to build this cocktail drink into an explosively popular item. But after such um, heavy investment in brand campaign, the result was less than optimal. So how could a company build a food item into an explosively popular item? Now, the product became popular in 2015. We would call them early time explosively popular items. If you are interested, you could go on our website and look at our specific reports on different industries. They are very comprehensive. It's a honey, butter, almond um, products. I will use uh, three examples to make uh, comparisons. Now, the first case is the early stage explosive product. This is called um, a white lava chocolate. Its a market grew steadily in 2014, and in, in the year 2015, it grew dramatically. So it didn't start from a scratch. The first case was a uh, was an example. It started from scratch, but the second case, the white lava chocolate, 
and uh, it was there in 2013 and stable growth 2014 and dramatic growth 2015 it was uh, pursued by uh, snake snack funds have you ever read a book called the point of explosion uh, there was an article titled the point of explosion and it described the journey from uh, a niche market uh, product to a mass market product and the, th the third example was uh, this uh, uh, dried fruit product uh, it has uh, reached a mature phase but uh, it is still an explosive item so I have uh, given you three examples uh, early stage um, medium stage and mature stage of explosive items. A look at this chart and um, uh, we have a platform in place and you can find the, uh, the positioning of uh, your product. Now let's look at the gender profile of uh, fans of explosive items. Who are these consumers? Now let's look at the uh, female consumers uh, by age and by uh, different stages in life. And here is uh, by uh, the level of cities, tier 1, 2, 3, etc. And here we can be more specific. We have to uh, zoom in to district level, for example, Jing'an district, we can uh, zoom in to a district level within the city. This is a certain city within Zhejiang province. Uh, in a certain locality, what flavors do our local people prefer? Because uh, your feelings of sixth sense might, might be different from the data. Now, this is my final uh, PPT. CBN is a con not a conventional media company. We'd like to leverage the data from Alibaba and make a better quality data analysis thanks to Jack Ma and Li Rei Gang. Because of these two uh, people, uh, we achieved uh, this uh, business transactions and the total transaction value uh, was uh, 4 billion. We hope to uh, stand outside the current market. We will not be different by comparison with other data analytics company. And we have a large amount of uh, clients. And our headquarter is in Shanghai and next to SMG headquarters. Once again, I'd like to thank you for your attention. Should you have any questions about the uh, data center of uh, CBN or known as CBN data, you can either contact me or my colleagues. And you're encouraged to search CBN data for more data. Hope my presentation is useful to you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Huang Lei. Um, now it's time for a Q&A. Uh, if there were any questions from our audience, we might have uh, some time to uh, answer some questions. Hello, Mr. Huang. For, uh, thank you for your presentation. I'm from Centauri uh, Beverages Company. I've got two questions. First is relevant to your presentation. The second is uh, not relevant to your company, uh, presentation. Why are you saying transaction in Q4 is the peak? by comparison with the other three quarters. Second, CBN is regarded as a, a neutral media. But after your strategic partnership with Alibaba, will you lose your neutrality whenever you report a business uh, news and cases? Well, I'd like to take a second question first. CBN is a neutral uh, business media. The CBN's collaboration with Alibaba is at the uh, digital marketing tools level. So we're only collaborating 
in the uh, digital marketing development based on the uh, commercial data provided by Alibaba. The production of our media content has nothing to do with this partnership because it's the, 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 the data uh, development and an analysis cooperation. It's not a media content production collaboration or partnership. So this collaboration will not jeopardize uh, the uh, neutrality of a CBN in the production of a media content because the number one value of a CBN is neutrality. We will not undermine our neutrality. Uh, to answer your first question, why Q4 sales uh, is the highest in the whole year? Because in Q4 is a promotion season online. Therefore, uh, the data collected uh, showed that Q4 transaction volume was the largest out of the whole year. We also did a weighted uh, computation, and we have already excluded promotions impact on sales. We don't want the result to be tainted. So it's already weighted. Any other questions? Any other questions from the audience? If not, I'd like to say thank you. Thank you very much.